This is the Malfus Brothers, and you're watching Strike, Strike TV. TV. Hey everybody, Brian here, Strike TV, backstage access. I warn you now, get ready for this. <laughs> Our special guest, you know, I don't know, there's really not much way of describing them, but just down home, good old music. I say there's two types of music, type you like and the type you don't like. Well, that's the truth. I'm and I think it. it's a sold out show tonight. I don't know, I haven't heard, but I, I hope we have a good crowd. Somebody, anyway. Well, there's... there's Believe me, because I kind of looked online. So for those of you that said, hey, the Malpas brothers, you're like, oh, dang, I need to check these guys out. You got to go online and get this stuff early. Follow on up. You know, matter of fact, check them out in your local area. But then we're going to talk about this a little bit. I think you have a little festival. You going to keep that? We do. Up? Yes, sir. Yeah. So we were going to you get three days. OK, to check them out. So what's the website real quick? So it's all the Malpas brothers dot com. That's and that I, simple. At, well, he we I came up. He came it. up with. He's Did creative. You? Well, you said I mean, he. Look, now that's you, all it took some thinking, right here. I've been watching. You say he's the better brother or something. Oh, like he's a, he's just he's the only one I got. So okay, that, well, that makes him the best automatically. Okay. But but uh, <laughs> but yeah, he's a genius in a group, don't you think? Is he? Yeah. Okay. He, look at him. Can't you tell he's smart? Well, he he's got the smart hat on. Yeah, he's got the smart. If it wasn't for me, there wouldn't be my office brothers. <laughs> really. Oh, that's right, because let's see. I'm the younger brother. He's the only brother. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so without him, there would be but, no. But I think now someone uh, won a contest when they were a little younger, right? That was me, yeah. yeah talent so. show when I was a kid, yeah. <laughs> and I, I, start, look at it. I started this stuff, so I take the blame, yeah. I started as a kid, and then uh, when I guess when I turned about 12 or 13, he picked up a mandolin then. He's four years younger than, than I am, so uh, he started playing mandolin first, and it just sort of grew into what we're doing now. And so, and the music kind of runs in your blood, right? It does. Our grandfather ran a little um, bar, really, and, nice. and played and sang there. And uh, we picked it up from him. And my mom, of course, plays piano in church and stuff like that. So we've, we've got the honky-tonking gospel on both sides. <laughs> Is that a thing? Can we call that the honky-tonk gospel? Honky-tonk gospel, yeah. Honky-tonk yeah, gospel. Honky-tonk gospel. Wow. So, um... So you start playing first. So the mandolin, I mean, is it because I'm not, you know, I don't understand how Marty Stewart, Ricky Skagg, Ronovan, and those guys, goes on a little bitty old mandolin of the it's guitar. It's weird to me too, yeah. Yeah, that's a, so what, was it you that kind of? Hey, well, I was playing acoustic and um, and we were <clears throat> highly influenced by the Leuven brothers. Yes. And which I played mandolin. And so Taylor decided he wanted a mandolin. Wanted a mandolin. Yeah. And we thought he doesn't really want, but he did. He was a kid and he learned to play it pretty quick yeah and i still enjoy playing it I, but i always want to be a guitar player right that was always my thing well you you got that i thing. wanted to be <laughs> i wanted to be a guitar player before i even knew what really what it was wow i want because i loved the way they looked okay was there any influences so when you're talking about you know when your grandfather kind of they had the bar type thing <clears throat> what were some of the influences of y'all the that you listened to i guess was there anything oh yeah i mean for Lubin brothers uh Merle Haggard, of course. Charlie Pride was we a huge, talk about some huge influence. Yeah. Uh, Ernest Tubb, yeah. you know, and then for Taylor, uh, guitar players, yeah, Jimmy Caps, yeah, Leon the Sheriff, Rhodes. Leon Rhodes, um, Billy Bird, Hot Roy Nichols, Grady Martin. Yeah. He's got a he's got Leon a couple of Leon's guitars, one yeah. of Jimmy Caps' guitars. So he he's got Ira's man one. So yeah, he's, I have he's a got a whole lot of stuff I don't deserve. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't. But I think he does. And when they say, well, Brian, so let's talk about a gentleman by the name of Merle Haggard. I mean, to me, I mean, look, I'm just a fan. But to me, Haggard's probably one of the top three, four, five oh, yeah. just oh, music I, <clears throat> history. I'd be hard to, to um, say there's anybody better vocalist yes. or writer than Merle Haggard. I think he was the best. You know, uh, and, of course, there's so many greats, but I, I just think Merle had it all, the songwriting ability and musicianship and singing and you know, he was the same way. He told me one time that all he ever wanted to do was be a guitar player. Wow. He didn't care anything about singing. But what a waste that would have been. Boy, you ain't kidding. <laughs> Seriously. You know, and it's funny. So we say that, you know, we have Merle in them, but he saw that much in you guys. Well, he did. He did take us under his wing. And, you know, we don't feel worthy of getting to do this stuff with these people. But uh, I guess they they see that we're passionate about it and love it. And, um <clears throat> 
you know, we're, we're trying to keep it alive. I, I had a guy ask us earlier. He was asking about the band. He said, were y'all any good? I said, well, I don't know if we're any good or not, but we sure do love what we do. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the main thing, you know. <laughs> Well, I mean, you must be good if you have festivals. and then. Well, we do. We have a three-day festival in Denton, Denton, North Carolina. Yeah, yeah. And that Mother's Day weekend, and uh, you can attend that. It's th- well, this year we have the Isaacs and T. Graham Brown as our, as our country and uh, gospel guests. Yeah. And then uh, loads of great bluegrass bands, too. And uh, then we're having a new TV show on RFD TV that yes. comes on Saturday night. And we just started filming season two. We did a second same season. Uh, well, we've already filmed part of it, and then I think we did a second part of it in January. Yeah, so we're – and played the Opry a bunch of times. So we've been blessed. You know, we're happy. You yeah. know, people say, well, when you, you know, when you going to make it big? But doing what we do, uh, getting to play those places is, is – that's that's the ultimate thing to us. You know, of course, Opry, be an Opry member would be – that'd be the tops, you know. Yeah, but, well, I'm sure of that. Uh, we don't really – we definitely don't do it for the money. <laughs> Boy, that's <laughs> right. and, and it's yeah. definitely hard on yeah, you. Speaking of that, can I borrow twenty? <laughs> yes, you know what I do because I owe them actually twenty a piece. That's right, yeah, yeah. Just, just for let let me yeah. be on here. So uh, I mean, well, you just I, I, I owe you things. Yeah, I, I got here early. That's right, yeah. <laughs> so, but you know, what, actually, to help them out, we go to the the Malpasbrothers dot com. Malpasbrothers dot com. And, and so uh, let me tell you, they have their latest project that is out was so good they had to blow the thing up. Oh gosh. And make it super size. That's right, super size. So y'all check this out. Lonely Street. We're proud of that album. Doyle Lawson and Ben Isaacs produced it. And uh it's got a a, a right right smart amount of songs on it we wrote. And, yes. Uh, of course they're all I like it's that country. is the Taylor the, Malpas. The Taylor <laughs> Malpas. Yeah it does. Chris Malpas, the Taylor Malpas is second. <laughs> That's really all that matters, isn't it? Yeah. So so tell us <laughs> tell us about the right so Doyle out the hotel Doyle lost the real story real real quick I was on a plane I flew to New Mexico to see a guy named Kid Rock okay yeah and somehow some way we all ended up being on the same play and I said sir I said I'm just the biggest fan of yours you would not believe it this has been years ago wow of course I said sir I'm the biggest fan that man thought I was crazy <laughs> oh man he's because yeah. so, I was there for Kid Rock well he's a he great, he's wonder, a great guy. I never wonder why Kid Rock didn't go by Pebble. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. That's a good idea. <laughs> so go to the malpasbrothers.com. <laughs> and pebble. they're, they're going to put up a uh, – they're going to put it's up a – <laughs> <laughs> And so while – anyway, so let's talk about the record. <laughs> See what I have to deal with. Yeah, right. yeah it's – I mean, a lot of good songs on there. Of course, there's a, a couple um, that we don't. Jeannie uh, Seeley wrote that. Yes. And then – uh, and don't cry, Daddy. Don't cry, Daddy, on there, which uh, Mike Davis wrote. But, but uh, oh, Mike Davis. But then there's a lot of stuff on there. Love slips away. That was written by Ronnie Reno and and uh, and Merle Haggard, and and it was written and pitched to Lefty Frizzell, and he didn't. He passed away before he cut it. Merle cut a demo, and it had never been released, and we we cut it on here. So it was kind of cool to release that. And then a lot of songs we wrote with uh, folks on there. So. I mean, we're proud of it. It's it's just stone cold country, yeah, and, that, and that it is. But it's, that's uh, that's what we love. And that's what we do. We don't know any other way to be. Right. So. Okay. He needs to make sure he's getting all this credit. Yeah, on he's there. looking at. Yeah, you, you gotta make sure he gets all yeah, of he, on there. He's never heard it. How, how many songs did you write on that co-write? I didn't. I didn't actually write any on this. Chris. Okay. He does, Chris dude. is a way better writer. Than no, I, I don't know about that. <laughs> I didn't even get all the credits I deserved. No listen, listen to him. Who's counting? <laughs> Who's counting? <laughs> <laughs> right, you look, look good in the picture, though. Look, as as the long picture as the, though, as fine. long as the money shows up, right? You know when we went and took that oh, picture, there <laughs> that little there was a little abandoned town. Well, still, I mean, there's still it's a here town. in Texas. It's yeah. here in Texas. You know, we stood out there in that street for like three hours, and that car never passed. Yeah, really, it's an abandoned, like an abandoned town. Part Hurricane of town. had hit it. Okay, well, I'm not happy about Years the hurricane, ago. but can you let me know where that is? That's where I want to move. I want to think where that town is. <laughs> I'll find out for yes. sure. Um, <laughs> Do you know Tracy Pitcox? Oh yeah, he's yeah. the heart of Texas. Yeah, we it. do a lot. He's on our host on our show, and yeah. uh, hey, his photographer, uh, Kimberly, she took that picture. I heard that in the twenties and thirties that that town was like a booming destination, really? like New York booming. That's cool. Yeah. And then a hurricane wow. came through and like destroyed. And the hurricane did that and just shut it all down. 
And then we came there and made it That's just a piece of – Well, wait, you can, what, we you finished came back it all. So can they change <laughs> it to the useless. Malpas Brothers town? I would love that. That was you just know? a piece of useless information. Well, we thought we'd No, it's anyway. good information. I mean, look, so right there you got the statue, photo for the statue of the town already picked out. That's right. I bet we won't never get any credit for that. We probably won't, but it's worth a try. We're going to give you the credit. I want a statue. <laughs> Wow. So, um, so tell us about a Malpas Brothers show. Well, um, if you come, of course, you'll you'll hear some of our original music. Just mm -hmm. and uh, but then we do a lot of of uh, Merle Haggard, Hank Williams, Stonewall Jackson, Leuven Ooh. Brothers, Ooh. Uh, Johnny song. do some Johnny Cash, mm -hmm. and um, and then a lot of comedy. We do a lot of laughs. You know, we like to tell funny stories, and Taylor's good at all that. So right. we we like to make the people part of the show. Yeah. And then of course. Uh, if somebody has a request, if we if we can hear them hollered out or whatever, we'll try to do it. And then at the end of the show, we always go out and sign until the last person leaves, you know, because without them, we wouldn't be right? able to do it. So. Well, and that's good to know. So real quick, so you mentioned the Opry, and I forgot to ask because I love the Opry. Oh, right? yes, sir. I really do. So how did you get the uh, the invite or the note to, hey, you're going to play the Opry? That would have been Jimmy Capps. Yep. The sheriff. Yep. We, we had uh, done the – Larry's Diner a lot of times with oh, Jimmy. Yeah, Larry and he, he was getting ready to celebrate his 60th anniversary on the Opry. His first yeah. time ever playing the Opry was behind the Leuven Brothers on Knoxville Girl. So he asked us at the Ryman to play Knoxville Girl. That was our first time on the Opry doing that with him behind us. Marty Stewart was behind us. Mm. Um, it was a cool, cool. And then after that, it's just been continued going, you know, and every time we go, I'm, if you ever – I mean, the Opry's tops oh, yes. to me, you know, and so it, it's important to always be there when they call if we can, you know. So. Oh, definitely. I love the Opry. So I go back. <clears throat> when you go backstage, you walk along the, you walk along that wall, I guess where the inside is, where they have a little Coke machine, a little ice tea machine. There's a picture with Emmy Lou Harris. I think it's Emmy Lou Harris and Ricky Skaggs. It may be. I'm Somebody to says Emmy Lou Harris but I don't think, and Keith Whitley, but I don't think it is. I'm trying to think of that picture. I'll have to look at that next yeah, time. Yeah, so when we're walking in where you have that little area where they have this. And they used to do Larry Gatlin when they did the Tuesday night. Right. Kind of show. They would yeah. kind of sit there. Yeah. When you walk back there, there's that picture of Emmy Lou Harris. Find out who it is for me. Every I time I, I go, I, I look at the pictures and I always see something. Oh, I, I, see. I just look at the pictures and I'm just. I'm that way anyway, but anyway. Uh, weirdest memories. You know, you have some memories of going to Opry. To, and I, Jimmy would get us by there as kids. But, but I remember. The last time I saw Waylon Jennings was there, and he had he had been so sick, mm -hmm. and he he'd have to walk and stop and lean up. They used to have lockers. Yes. Uh, down the he'd walk and stop and lean up beside the locker to get his breath to keep. But he was in bad. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. He was in horrible shape. But that was the last time I saw Waylon Jennings. He was backstage visiting. He wasn't playing that night. It's changed so much. Oh yeah, it's changed. Oh a lot. yeah, it was. Uh, so I was there one night and speaking of the locker. Rudy Gatlin was so happy because they gave him a lock. Oh, yeah. And I think the Gatlins are usually in room one, which is Mr. Akers. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're We're still supposed are, to keep, yeah. not supposed to close the door. But yeah. You can do that. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. right. Larry, yeah, but, yeah. And they talked about the locker. But yeah. anyway, so, man, I could sit here and I could talk to you guys. Well, night. thank you, man. I but, appreciate you. So, better than that, I'm just going to go catch another show. And you should do the same. You can see them everywhere. You can watch them on television. You can go check out a festival. I mean, they're like nationwide. So y'all check them out. Go to the themalpusbrothers.com. Y'all do us a favor. I mean, and if I could tell you the whole reasons, not only to support them, buy some merch. You know, as we know these days with all this other streaming, blah, blah, blah. I mean, they have band members and they have managers and they have all these people and everything. We need to kind of, and plus we need to get the music out there. Well, that's, that's our biggest goal, yes, sir. Trying yeah. to get our music out there so we can keep, keep traditional country music alive, you know. Well, y'all Introduce it to new people. Y'all are doing a darn good job. Well, of thank it. you, sir. Thank and you, I am honored. Well, thank you I'm for thankful, what you do. I appreciate you. So, uh, but anyway, so y'all check us out, striketv.com. Go to themalpusbrothers.com. Tommy, thank you. Sir, I appreciate you back there, Mr. Smith, right? Is this... That's it, Landon. Yeah, he's our Landon. drummer. Twi oh, Landon. 20. Dude. Are you 21 yet? Almost. Almost well, as long as you don't life without parole, you're okay. That's right. <laughs> so, anyway, so uh, Brian here, Strike TV. We'll see you next time. Down the road of the As long as there are pictures and frames Though they're gone, they'll always remain Empty rooms and empty spaces 
what I love you must be still they live not too far from me Yeah. 